ऑलरेडी सम बैकग्राउंड इन इंटीग्रेशन और फ्यूज और कैमल Yes, just from the right. I uh, I have worked with message broker before. Uh, integration okay. has little uh, idea and then uh, background also. Uh, I worked okay. with message queue, IBM uh, MQ and other things, but uh, okay. this space is all new for me actually. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So just to I'll try to give a quick little background on why we need bro, enterprise service bus. and how camel and fuse are helpful for us so normally when we talk about integration uh, it will start with uh, int integration between two systems so what people will do either they will write some customized interfaces through which we will integrate two applications so when we talk about integration we mostly start with point to point integration so we'll write some in interfaces and we'll enable some integration between two applications later down the line we'll also identify that we need to communicate with a third system so then again we'll see okay if not lot of work is required then we'll another create another point to point interface between the third application among the three applications so and as we we have more and more application come into landscape and then we'll try to figure out this point to point integration is not working because you have to do a lot of customization if there is a change in one part of the application and it will impact your in interfaces then we'll we have to better think of a solution which will which will be more generic in nature uh, so that you can reuse the uh, integration flows and you can integrate with a new application without much uh, difficulties so uh, then we'll th think about using some integration frameworks like uh, uh, there are a lot of frameworks which are provided by open source or commercial applications for example apache camel so apache camel is a kind of integration framework which enables Uh, which can help you to under uh, integrate multiple system based on certain standards uh, and certain uh, uh, standard interfaces or certain standard protocols so most of the time uh, when when i started with the cam apache camel like 6 7 years 6 years back uh, we were uh, using apache camel to integrate some Health, healthcare right uh, uh, integration it, it was working fine later after 2 years we had a record monitor my integration i want to do some troubleshooting i want to do some uh, provide some dashboard to the users who messages or who can see if the message failed what kind of action so so many of the things are not aspect are not provided by uh, you look for a better also provide you some sort of uh, interface or framework or deployment you can check what are the status of message how many uh, how many routes are running is there any problem with any route how many message came to my integration if how many of them passed how many of them failed if some message has failed how can i reprocess them so apart from apart from in the just system to system integration you also have to tell your system integrator then uh, what is the option uh, then many companies provide you enterprise service buses esbs so we have uh, esb coming from for example jbus fuse it provides a uh, esb called jbus fuse so there are other esbs uh, new esbs there uh, there some are, some are open source some are commercial derivatives so here we are going to talk about uh, jbus fuse and uh, how what kind of integration framework it provides what kind of uh, support it provides and how can we deploy our applications or integrations in jbus fuse how can we develop those applications what are the various options we can use to develop our integration flows so basically jbus fuse is a enterprise service bus and it is using uh, so it, what basic need is it needs it is de deployed in java it needs a java runtime and uh, so it's like a jbus fuse is like a server right we have worked on servers like apache tomcat or we have worked on worked on servers like uh, normal jbus eap so jbus fuse is also like an application server and it is hosted it has to be hosted inside uh, java it needs java runtime internally it uses a uh, uh, so if you talk about if you know about apache tomcat it it is like a j2v server application server java to standard server so 
uh, JBoss Fuse is a little different from other application servers in terms that it is using a different runtime container to host the application and to run those applications. So it is using something called, called uh, Apache Cara uh, application inside a standard J2E container. It is using a container which is based in OSGI. So OSGI stands for Open Service Gateway Initiative. It is like a specification that says that how should we uh, deploy our, develop our application, how should we define the dependencies of the application, and how can we deploy those applications in a OSG compliant container such as JBoss Fuse. So uh, this is all about the ESB. Basically, uh, it is it. So as a ESB, what you expect from JBoss Fuse, it will give you a integration framework where you can develop your integration logic and uh, define your integration workflows. It will give you a container where you can deploy your integration flows. It will give you a messaging broker where if you need to use the uh, broker message messages, me, me, uh, broker-based integration, then you can use some broker. It will provide you support for third-party uh, libraries and DLLs, not DLLs, third-party libraries, where you can uh, write your, where you can use them for writing your uh, integration flows. Or it will also give you some sort of UI where you can monitor the uh, health of your integration. You can see how many routes are running, what is the status of each route when the route executed last time. It will give you also interfaces where you can uh, do the live deb debugging and troubleshooting. Also, all those things, it will come as a package and then you, you can do the integration using JBoss Fuse. Okay. So what we do because is like uh, JBoss Fuse is based on open source stack and it is using some co open source component to build up its various part. So if you see with the highlighted ones, uh, these are the some of the major components which are inside JBoss Fuse, which will uh, which we'll be using to do our integration work. Okay, so we'll be using Apache Camel for writing our routes. We'll be using Apache ActiveMQ, which as the default message broker, it has support for any message broker. You can use if you're using uh, uh, like RabbitMQ or you're using WebSphereMQ, then you can also connect to those brokers. But it comes by default with Apache ActiveMQ as the bro message broker. If you have to use, uh, if you want to deploy uh, support for web services, then it uses internally Apache CXF. And for the container, it is using uh, Apache Cara, which is the OSGI based runtime. Okay. Any question on the fuse? Uh, are you clear with how why we need fuse? What is what are the other things it do, does? Yeah, yes, sure. Uh, so far, we good. good. Okay. So basically, um, um, once we have uh, how then how we'll start basically with fuse. So you need to download the fuse from JBO, Red Hat JBoss site, uh, and you have to for uh, you, there are two uh, flavors of fuse. One is for uh, OSJ based service, uh, OSJ based container, which is called Red Hat JBoss Fuse. Another is for uh, uh, normal standard J2E uh, server. Uh, they call it JBoss Fuse Service Works. So, depending on the requirement, you will uh, download one of the particular flavors. And then uh, you can start uh, developing your integration frameworks. Uh, so Fuse also comes with a uh, Eclipse-like ID. So it is uh, Eclipse-like. It's like Eclipse-like ID, which you can use for uh, <clears throat> for developing your routes or seeing the routes. It is called JBoss Red Hat JBoss Developer Studio. So you can download the latest version of Red Hat JBoss Developer Studio, and then you can, uh, if you have any existing application, you can import there, and then you can uh, uh, see how it is how it is being uh, it is. It, it has been designed. Or if you have to start new, then you can use the developer studio and start a new project. Okay. So uh, main part of the fuse will be how we write our integration logic, because that's what we want to understand uh, fuse. Uh, JBoss, uh, JBoss fuse is mainly used for deploying your integration solutions. So if you want to in integrate two systems, for example, one system is uh, sending you messages in a file and other system can only understand uh, web services. So as an integration expert or as a system integration, it will be your job to connect these two systems 
So what you need to do is you need to define some routes which will read from this file and then it will convert into the message uh, which is acceptable on the web service and then send those messages to the system B. So we'll be uh, as part of this uh, session will be uh, this classes uh, we will we'll try to understand how we'll write our integration uh, uh, routes or how we'll write our integration logic in Apache Camel. So basically Apache Camel, like I said, it is an integration framework. It is not an enterprise service bus. It is integration framework and it provides you uh, components provides you endpoints provides you uh, enterprise integration patterns and some other uh, tools through which we can write our integration logic so if you have to integrate through system using message broker uh, you can use apache camel which uh, give you ready-made components for connecting to message brokers if you want to connect to a database it, uh, apache camel gives you components for connecting to database you can connect using JDBC, you can connect using a skill component. If you want to use Hibernate, you can use Camel Hibernate components. If you want to connect using JPA, you, you can use Camel JP components. So basically Cam, Apache Camel gives you a, a lot of uh, bundled uh, packages through, through which you can connect to multiple systems uh, and do the integration. So basically, uh, in when we, we have, so normally people ask, uh, if I have to do my integration, what is the requirement? What, what basically I should understand? How my integration will work? What are the things I need to do? So any integration will start with uh, two things. First, the input and the output. So input means from where you will be getting data. And output means where you will be sending that data. So in any integration, if you, if you, if you are working as a system integrator, in any integration, you will always ask from where I'll be getting the data. They will be say, okay, you'll be getting data from a web service, or you'll be getting data from a database. You'll be getting data from a file. You'll be getting data from a message broker. And then next question you'll be asking, uh, where I have to send this data? They'll be saying, okay, you need to send it to another service, or you need to call, uh, you need to insert into database. So these are the two primary things you'll be always, you will always be asking as a system integrator. So what, from where I'll be getting my data, and from where I'll be sending that data to. In between that, you will also be required to convert that data from one format to another format. For example, one system sends you a text file and other system expects XML. So you need to somehow convert that uh, CSV file or text file into XML that other system understands. So apart from input and output, you need to write some logic using the camel enterprise patterns and components that will convert uh, data in from one format to another format that we normally call transformation. So camel provides you tools and uh, options for doing the data transformation. So data transformation can be like anything. You want to convert data from one format to another format, you can do that. You want to convert data from, uh, you receive data from one protocol and you want to send it to another protocol, you can do that. Or you can convert data from A to a common format and then send it to B and then receive the data from a B format and convert that back into common format that you can also do that. So depending on your requirement, you can do different types of data transformations. So Camel provides you that option, right? Also Camel, when we are talk, talking about integration, there could be possibilities that uh, when you are reading from a system, you have some exceptions or errors. Then in you, as a in system integrator, you are also expected to uh, gracefully handle those error scenarios. So Camel provides you a very good error handling mechanism. So we'll all do during the course. We'll also understand if error happens, what kind of things we can do. Can we resend the data? Can we retry? What are the policies we can use for doing this kind of thing? How to handle exceptions? So all those things we'll understand. Camel provides you a very good way to do logging uh, and trying to uh, trace the messages coming from one system to another system. Sometimes in integration, we face a scenario that uh, when we are uh, working on integration, system A sent a message, but system B never received it. And then both the systems will be like in a conflict. So Camel provides a very nice tracking mechanism through which you can understand if system A send a message, if it arrived on your route or not. If it has arrived in, in your integration logic, how many steps it has gone into and where it failed. So all those things we can track through the Camel APIs. Okay. So this is something about Camel. So Camel provides you ready-made endpoints. You don't have to work on uh, creating the interfaces all, all about yourself. You can use the interfaces provided by Camel to connect to the real world entities. For example, if if I ask you that uh, if you have to do integration, um, uh, suppose more, I believe that you 
you are doing coding in java so or you have background in uh, java so if you have to develop an application which will read from a file and then send it to message queue then what will be a typical approach so what you will be doing you will write a utility class which will be which will providing an interface to read the files and then you will load the file read the content of the file then at the end of the processing you close the file and then send the message uh, data to another utility where which will convert into the actual format for the message and then connect to the message broker and send the message to the messaging broker and then at the end of that you will close that connection so if if we have to develop it, we have to take care of infrastructure aspect also we should understand how we will connect to this endpoint or how we will connect to this interface and then uh, you have to take care of uh, all those logistics like closing the resources and other things in case of camel we don't have to worry about uh, that i have to read a file then i have to create a connection or i have to, to connect create a connection to broker all those things we don't have to worry camel provides me ready made components and i can just call those components to do the integration so my focus should be on uh, writing the business logic not on the uh, in, not on focusing on how to get the data or how to send the data so that is one flexibility that uh, uh, ensures that you develop your integration logic in a very short span of time without uh, the uh, integration flow or uh, the other aspect of the integration also uh, next question you might be asking is uh, if i am going to write my integration flow in camel then how i'll be doing that uh, what language i'll be using or what script i'll be using so camel is very flexible in terms of uh, giving you the options to write your integration logic so you can uh, in camel the the way we write our integration logic or it is called routes here so it is very simple there is something dsls or domain specific language where you can write your in uh, or spring you can write your integration logic in spring if you have more better background in java you can write your integration logic in java dsl if you have a background in scripting using groovy then you can also write your scripts in uh, integration logic in groovy uh, so camel at the end of the day it doesn't uh, bother where where we have written your integration logic in java or spring or groovy or scala or some other supported language it will be able to understand what you have done and it will be able to deploy your integration logic okay so that is one flexibility we have <clears throat> camel also has a lot of flexibility in terms of doing customization so suppose that you are going to use a stand so a lot of options uh, to configure that uh, endpoint to do a lot of specific things specific to your integration logic on top of that camel also gives you flexibility that you can write even your customized java code and plug with this component and do the things as as per your interest or as per your requirement so camel supports uh, integration with java code using beans so you can write beans and uh, stand uh, pojos and then you can integrate with camel and do some specific task during the processing okay so once we write our route uh, in any of the supported dsl how will do the deployment how will you run my how i will be running my route so camel here also gives you depending on the way you are using camel uh, or you are using the esb you can have the different deployment model uh, for testing purpose people prefer hot deployment where you can uh, where you have the jbus queues and it has a specific folder where you can copy your routes and it will be doing the hot deployment and your application will start working also uh, hot deployment is like uh, uh, for testing purpose is good you can change make a quick change and test it uh, very quickly but when you go for actual production deployment you don't want to do hot deployment so camel has a since jbus fuse is basically hosting camel runtime on top of java and which is a, and jbus fuse is a osj container uh, camel uh, jbus fuse is basically providing the way of deployment of the your application so in terms of jbus fuse it is called uh, features uh, features are like module uh and you can write your own module and tell fuse that i want to deploy this application in such and such way so you can write a deployment descriptor where you will tell i have dependency on this system dependency on system b c and i need this property file i need this xml file and then you can say that these are the uh, uh jars of my application and then it has to be started in order 1 2 and 3 and then you can do the deployment so that is like a feature based deployment so we'll also understand that how we can 
maybe once i write my application how can i deploy that in fuse so that my integration works okay um since uh, apache uh, caraf is internally used to run your application which is a osgi runtime uh, it is not very different from the normal java way of doing these things but it is very uh, it reduces your uh, burden of dependency management so normally suppose that if you are doing a deployment in uh, 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 for example tomcat then what basically we do we create a war file that will contain lot of jar files and then we'll do the deployment there is a very good possibility that uh, if i am doing my deployment and you are also doing the deployment both will create one one war files and my war will contain the jars some jars which will be there in your war file also so it, it sometime i will be using one version of jar file you will be using another version of jar file so there is a possibility that people may be using different version of jar or they have duplicate jars in their war file and then you are deploying it so it sometime creates problem in order to take care of all such things uh, jay uh, osgi provides a very nice approach where you uh, you don't have to copy all your dependencies along with your application what you need to tell uh, fuse is that i am deploying application and for running my application i need jar a jar b and jar c and then fuse will find those uh, dependencies for you and do, and take care of the deployment what i meant is suppose that i am deploying a application which will connect to database so what i need suppose that i am writing a jdbc based application so what i need i need some uh, suppose that i am connecting to sql database my sql database so i need uh, some drivers i need some uh, java based api some java based apis sql apis or i need some other apis uh, packages to run my application so all those things will be in my import uh, import right in when i write my java code so now uh, normally what happens when you deploy our application in terms of standalone java i'll bundle all those jar files i'll bundle the uh, mysql driver jar i will bundle third party dlls if i'm using common libraries common io uh, codec all those things i'll carry all those jar along with me and then i'll do the deployment in terms of osgi i i am importing anyway in my java code so i don't have to carry them this dependency has to be resolved by the container which is the caraf so how caraf is resolving this dependency on your behalf is if you if you see your jar file uh, normally what you will have uh, you will have packages and then the classes inside it you will also sometimes see a folder called meta enough so inside the meta enough you sometimes see the manifest file so if it is a stand alone jar uh, or a standard java jar uh, we have we see very less information inside meta enough meta manifest file uh, but in case of osgi uh, this manifest file can contain much more information basically this uh, a manifest file can contain information that for running your application what are the dependencies so there you can specify uh, all the packages that you need to run your application and uh, once you deploy your application in uh, fuse it will read this file and it will try to understand what are your import requirements and then it will go to the repository of fuse and load those jars for you so you don't have to actually carry those jars with your application you just tell these are my dependencies and it will load those jars for you okay on the other aspect uh, when i when you develop your application uh, there could be cases that one team is thing on common uh, utilities normally one team will uh, develop the application and they will upload the jar into some central repository and then other team who wants to use that jar they will be downloading it from the repository and then they will be importing in their project and using it now if team a updates the uh, jar they again have to go and get the download latest version most of the time your uh, uh, build system will do that automatically but sometimes you have to do that manually so uh, in this case what happens what are the services we are uh, expecting from other systems we we have a direct dependency on them so in case of osgi you can also define those dependencies in your manifest and automatically such jars and the highest version of jar or specific version of jar which is available it will be automatically downloaded for you not only third party dependencies but your internal dependencies will also be managed by fuse okay so we'll uh, see those things in detail uh, just to give a quick overview on how camel uh, route will look like so basically we need to have a starting point uh, 
uh, that will trigger the uh, processing and then um, uh, we'll get the input uh, input is mandatory uh, because without input you cannot do anything and then you will have a series of steps uh, that you want to do in your uh, validation part or you want to run some transformation or do some message conversion or transform anything that you want to do as part of your business logic and finally you will send the data to a uh, output okay so uh, what we need for setup uh, we need to uh, install jbus fuse and then uh, we can start with the uh, integration uh, we can start with simple uh, uh, simple application to see how it works okay. any question till now Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I think uh, I'll ask my questions at the end once you finish it. Yes. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. So for now, I, I just want to give a quick, uh, uh, quick demo that how how we'll do the integration. So let me open my developer studio. So what I have done setup is I am installed Fuse as a Windows service. So basically, when you download the Fuse from Red Hat site, you'll get a GIF file which you can unzip, and you can run that uh, in two modes. One, you can run Fuse in console mode. So when you run Fuse in console mode, you need to click a batch file, and then it will be running. Uh, it will load all the dependencies of the minimum required dependencies of Fuse, and it will start your application. Second, you can also install Fuse as a Windows service. So as part of session, we'll go how to install to the installation of as Windows service. And then uh, once your uh, service is running, then uh, Fuse provides admin console. So this admin console is available on uh, localhost. So it provides admin console. It, by default, it is available on port 8181. Uh, for some reason, I changed it to 8161. So all this customization, we'll see how can you do that. So, so this is the Red Hat JavaScript Fuse Management Console. So if you log into this, here you can see uh, different things. So as I said, uh, JavaScript Fuse comes with a default message broker, which is active MQ. So if you click on the active MQ, so here if you're running any, if you have any queues or, or topics, then you can uh, see them. Uh, if you have a queues, then you can see the list of all the queues. And you can also see each queue containing how many messages, how many consumers are there, how many messages came, how many messages enqueued and dequeued, all the details you can see. Similarly, if you have topics, uh, uh, then you can see the name of the topic and you can see how many uh, people are connecting to that topic and getting data from this. And then uh, if you have run, if you have deployed any application uh, into Fuse, then you can, you will see a tab called Camel. Inside the camel, you can see the routes which are running. So for example, I'm running some sample route. So this route uh, basically is doing some work. And then you can see uh, what is the status of this route and what are the route, uh, what are the what are the things being done on this, uh, what how this route is defined. So all those things you can see, what is the source of the route. So these things are required for the administration aspect where somebody can monitor it. You can see the route matrix that will tell you uh, if it is running properly and getting data, it will tell you how many uh, message came, how many got processed, what was the time taken, maximum time taken to process one exchange, what was the minimum time taken, what was the, ex uh, uh, what was the uh, average time, when it came for the first time, when it came the last time. So all those data you can see here. So in your route, uh, basically what we do is uh, uh, we connect. Uh, so when we do work, talk about integration, we connect with an real world entities like files, or databases, web services, or message broker. So those are called endpoints in Camel. So we can see for my integration how many endpoints I have. So I'm having HTTP endpoint, I have a HTTPS endpoint, I have a log endpoint. So all those things you can see. Okay, whatever routes we have, you can see the information here. Similarly, uh, we can we can also have a dashboard. Uh, this is like uh, if you have worked on J console. Uh, anytime you can see this is something similar to J console where you can see uh, system based information like uh, what is the CPU load, what is the memory load for your application, and some other information related to that. So, whenever we write our uh, integration, uh, all this information can be logged inside a fuse log file. 
so this log file either you can access directly on those fuse server or, or you can also be remotely access through this tool so you can see the log here and you can if you want to see the log for a particular level or suppose i want to see only the error logs so i can see, i can filter it and if there is any error log i'll be able to see it uh, for example i want to see some info so if any info is there i can see it if you want to filter log for some some particular keywords or something you can do that also uh, we can also see how many applications are running inside my jvs fuse by going towards gi so here you can see these are the applications which are running so we'll once we go into detail session we'll understand how these applications are running uh, at what level they are running what are the system application what are the user applications so all those things we'll try to understand later okay uh, if you want to see the memory status at any point thread status at any point of time you can use this tab also it provides a nice console through which you can uh, run the commands and do some uh, work we'll have one session on the uh, uh, commands uh, where you i'll explain you what are the useful commands to manage your application to do the deployment or to to do the patching of jbus fuse or to do some tracking of errors or uh, the uh, issues so I, you can uh, do it man on the console or you can also do it on the ui so these things we can uh, will explore i'll quickly open one sample route and how it looks like so this is the ui aspect we'll explore more once we start the session and we'll see how how we can manage this ui part so for the session normally uh, people ask like what is the best way to write my integration logic so i uh, since many people have background in Spring, uh, it is the easiest only easier option to write your integration logic using the Spring DSL. So you write uh, in the Spring, uh, which is like XML, and then you deploy them. Um, if you uh, so our uh, during the course we'll be using our uh, we'll be developing our routes and deploying them using the Spring DSL. We'll also see one example of Java DSL, and uh, we'll also see an example using Java. Uh, few examples using java, java dsl and then uh, so that if in case you have to uh, uh, write your routes in your for your recommend in java then you can use that okay So most of the time, if you're writing a Spring route, uh, will uh, how we create a project in Fuses it's using a, a common term called artifacts. So for creating a project in a Fuse. Uh, you can create uh, required artifacts. So if you're creating a web service, then you can create uh, you can create the predefined pre structure of the project. You don't have to remember that if it is a web service project, what should my folder structure? If it is normal uh, J unit project, what should my structure? So uh, Camel provides a good support for that. Uh, it is uh, all uh, it is all well defined, and you can create a, from a format which is called the artifact. So you can choose the proper artifact, and then uh, you can. Uh, create those projects. In the higher version of uh, Developer Studio, they have a nice uh, UI uh, through which you can drag and drop and define your routes also. So it's a nice tool to explore. Uh, uh, you can drag and drop using the uh, uh, what you say is icons, and then you can. Go back and do the code behind and write your own routes. Okay, so it provides you what are the components? Uh, what are the components with Camel? It provides you all these components here uh, for control flow. For example, how to do the 
uh, right conditions or if you want to do transformation then you can use some of the icons if you want to use some uh, if you want to insert threads you can use drag and drop and insert this uh, components are like basically interfaces through which you will connect to the real world entities uh, for example i want to connect to a web service so i can use cxf i want if it is soap based i can use cxf if it is restful i can use cxf rs if i want to connect to a uh, active mq i can use active mq component if i want to connect to any normal message broker i can use a uh, uh, jms component so these things are provided by camel you can do drag and drop and do it so here it is the design mode you can design your route and then in the source if you go it will it generates a nice uh, uh, so code behind for you so here you can see the uh, code uh, which you have uh, where, which you have defined in the design so some of the code will be auto generated like uh, input your inputs will be autom automatically generated and then uh, based on the business logic you will be writing your uh, customizing the routes here okay so this is an example of a spring dsl um, and then uh, there are multiple ways to run the routes if the routes has no external dependency you can run them locally uh, inside the inside this uh, uh, ID also you can right click on them and run them or if you want to really see the indication you can deploy them you can create a jar out of it and then deploy into the fuse so as I said uh, fuse provides you option for hot deployment also you can copy the you can build a jar and deploy it in fuse and as a hot deployment or you can prepare a deployment descriptor and deploy as a uh, as a uh, feature deployment Okay, any question? Hey, uh, hi, uh, this is Praveen. Uh, sorry, uh, is, uh, am I talking to Siva? Yes. Okay, uh, hi Siva. Uh, before I start, thanks for your time. I appreciate that. Uh, I have some questions. The first one would be, looks like what I understood is you would be covering this session, most of the session using Spring right uh let's say if i'm a newbie to spring i'm not you know familiar with it would you be able to cover that a very high level what spring how that all this uh spring you know uh references initializations all these work yeah yeah we'll be covering that so when i so basically how we'll start is we'll start we'll start is a very simple example and then uh, session by session will build on top of the same example adding more uh, endpoints more patterns more complexity to it i know uh, so uh, from point of view would you be able to cover how exactly the spring content is you know all this initialization or bean references how do they work you know at a very high level Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so if I just uh, insert a bean and I don't tell you how it works, then maybe if you insert another bean, it will fail. So I have to tell you, like, uh, if you insert a bean inside your Spring context, how, what are the things you need to define? What are the dependency we have to ensure, right? All those things will be explained. Okay. Okay. That helps. Uh, the second one, I see all the examples from JBoss Fuse, you know, quick starts. They do use Blueprint. Uh, would you be able to cover blueprint also? Yes. So I'll take some examples on blueprint. So basically, what is the difference between in, uh, Spring and Blueprint? Is a very uh, question when we had previous sessions also. It's like uh, XML. It is also XML configuration. the old uh, thing it is coming okay so spring was all earlier before the camera also so then what and spring uh, based applications can be deployed in uh, um, environments like osgi or non osgi and servers you can write your spring based application and deploy in tomcat also it will work you can write your application in spring and deploy in jbus fuse also so it, uh, so it means that spring has uh, backward compatibility between uh, 
J2E servers and non-J2E uh, servers like OSGA containers. Blueprint is a optimized uh, configuration for running on the OSGI servers only. So if you write your routes in OSGI, uh, if you deploy your routes in OSGI and use Blueprint, then it is optimized to run in OSGI. Same route will not run in uh, non-OSGI servers like a standalone Tomcat. Okay, so that is one difference between the uh, Spring and Blueprint. So for example, I you have you have uh, JBoss now, JBoss Fuse now, and you have written all your integration logic in Blueprint. And since JBoss Fuse is based on OSGI, you can deploy your uh, Blueprint routes, and it will work fine. Two years down the lane, uh, we have a severe problem with JBoss Fuse, and uh, we don't want to use JBoss Fuse. Uh, then we have to find alternate server, and your architect suggests that let's use Tomcat because because good support is there. So then you take this integration logic and put it into Tomcat, it will not work because Blueprint is not optimized to run on non-OSGI servers. But if you have written your routes in Spring and you can with my minimum uh, changes, you can still run in Tomcat. There is one difference. Got it. Yeah, got it. So uh, with the practical sessions uh, in this course, would you be going beyond those quick starts or you know would you be cover only the details of quick starts no no so what we'll be covering is uh, in general uh, you have a syllabus right, that she would have shared with you and uh, it has some steps like day session one day session two three uh, we'll be covering all of them it's not just quick start we'll be also going into detail and we'll be uh, i'll be also explaining you uh, the why we are using this endpoint, what are the uh, options we can use on this endpoint, how we can customize it for our requirements, how we can use those patterns and customize it for our requirements. Plus, I'll be also giving you uh, uh, those, I'll be also sharing those samples with, with you, which you can build on top your customized versions. I'll be also giving you some uh, task that, okay, today we have covered this, this, this. Can you do the, can you enhance this example for three more things? So all those things we'll be covering. It's not just quick start. We'll be going in detail. We'll try to understand uh, why we are using this endpoint, why we are using this pattern, how how can we combine two patterns and make our own pattern. All these things. Uh, uh, so this uh, would you be covering how to write uh, test cases also yes. in using JavaScript? Yes. Yeah. So we'll be also covering uh, JUnit and uh, debugging also. So how can I debug from my, uh, how can I debug my routes and how can my test case, uh, JUnit uh, J, uh, test my routes, we'll cover that. See, 100% uh, test coverage is uh, uh, not possible in uh, Fuse, uh, Camel, because you have dependency on external systems. So we'll try to use mocks or uh, some, some of the mocking endpoint that Camel provides to cover your business logic. Yeah, basically, uh, my question is around camel mock component, the yes. endpoint there. Yeah. So, would you be covering that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so how long that uh, this? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I just you know I got this invite in the last minute. I haven't looked into the details. Uh, if you can give forward that a very high level with your past experience, how, how many sessions this uh, you know this course would okay. be? So normally uh, we say that uh, we'll have one hour class, but normally when you go into discussions, I on from my experience, I it it, it lost around one and one hour fifteen minute and or maybe one and a half hour also. So from 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 my end is I'm not very particular that if it is one hour I'll say no no we are done. If there's a question if there's a concern we'll discuss that and we have normally gone to one and a half hour also. I'm with sorry, all uh, those things, uh, yeah. With all those things, uh, normally we cover this course in 20 to 22 classes. 20 to 22 classes. Okay. So, would you be providing the recording session also for each? Yeah, class? recordings will be provided by Siva. Yes. From my end, I'll be sharing the samples, notes, or uh, examples, whatever will be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. And recordings will be shared by Siva. The organizer. Okay, okay. So with this uh, CXF, uh, uh, you would be covering both CXF WS and CXF RS, right? 
Yes. So we'll be covering soap based and restful work. All right. Yeah, you know, the reason why uh, I'm sorry if I'm asking too many questions. I'm planning this session for my cousin brother. Uh, I am actually myself working on J Vasil right now. You know, due to some time constraints, and I'm looking for someone who can help me. Yeah. Uh, and, mm, yeah, I guess that's all I have to. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure. So basically, our sessions will be like uh, first, we'll be discussing some. Uh, we'll take an example and then we'll discuss those endpoints, how we use them, how we configure them, uh, and then uh, how can we enhance those endpoints for our requirement. And then we'll take some patterns, uh, how we use them, commonly we use pattern in integration flows, and we'll discuss and build some complexity on top of it. So we'll start with a very simple example, and then we'll build some complexity on top of it. See, Camel provides like 150 plus components, but uh, from my past experience, you hardly use more than 20 components to do your daily integration. So those components are files, web services, database, message brokers. Most of the time people integrate with these things. Web services, HTTP. Okay. Yes, uh, hey, Shiva. This is Rajesh. Uh, so uh, let, let me. I mean, actually, I I don't have much background from Java, uh, and uh, I'm a Tipco guy. I've been working in Tipco like, like past seven, six, seven years, and Tipco business works. And uh, recently, my client started migrating to JBoss. So uh, I'd like to start learning, uh, start learning JBoss, and I also started learning some code Java right now, and uh, I'm in, in process like uh, finishing up the code Java. Okay. And uh, what do you suggest? Like, uh, so as I'm not from the Java background, like, is code Java is enough for the JBoss, or do I have to learn? Yes. Also, no, I think uh, I have uh, previous sessions with people who were on Tipco, and they were started migrating to JBoss Fuse. And mm -hmm. uh, they do. I they also had a similar doubt. But uh, from my experience, you don't need to be an expert in Java. If you mm -hmm. understand uh, basics of Java, it is more than enough. And you can uh, normally Camel provides all those things which you will directly using. Uh, you don't have to write very long extensions. Very not too much extension you have to write. So code Java is more than enough. Uh, but your uh, basics should be should be clear so that you can build anything complex on top of the simple things. Okay, the Spring Java is all in the advanced Java, is it? I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. I'm not, yeah. So, Spring like, is it? Has, hmm? Spring has many components. Uh, here mm -hmm. we are using Spring for uh, uh, writing our routes and IOC. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't need to be an expert in Spring. It is uh, uh, it is very simple inter when we have to use for Camel. Okay. And moreover, uh, even if you make any mistake in your Spring configuration, Camel gives you very general general description of the errors. So from there, you, from that, you can figure out what mistake you did. So you can go back and rectify it easily. Okay, okay. So just knowing that advanced uh, code job is, should be enough for the JBoss, if if I understand right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Okay. Uh, if 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 they if they build dependency on advanced level of Java, then not everybody will come into integration, right? Uh, if if they are into one few ESB, they will not come to next ESB because of this kind of dependency. So they have not built this kind of dependency that you need to be an expert in Java. Then only you can uh, work with Fuse. So they have built very minimal dependency. You need to know core Java, and you should have uh, you if you have some background in Fuse, you know how to define your interfaces. Or integration flow, it is more than enough. Okay, okay. <sighs> Let me think. Yeah, that's it uh, from my end. Uh, yeah. sure. uh, and I don't have any, ex any experience on this message broker in queue. I think those you will be calling from the basics, is it? Yeah, I just be coming in basics and in very detail. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, because I have a background of JMS working on the JMS and the RB. Okay. Mm. 
thing, my concepts of GMS is uh, same across all the brokers. Uh, you use you, you use ActiveMQ or you use RabbitMQ or you use uh, WebSphere. They all follow the same JMS uh, uh, concepts. Maybe some some broker provide three features, some provide two, some provide five, or that's all. So, but common concepts and other things remain the same. Okay. So, if you learn something on ActiveMQ, if that is provided available in uh, WebSphere MQ, you can use the, that in the same fashion there also. So, even if you learn something new here, you can apply it later in the other brokers also. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and one more thing, like uh, uh, for example, like right now you, st you created some spring, you copied that XML and showed to us. But when we start the sessions, you'll be uh, helping us, I mean, you'll be showing us to how to create those things, how to yes, some yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mentioned that uh, if you have to create a new project, uh, you don't have to struggle to define your folder structure and what files you need. Camel provides you a, a format or it provides you a ready-made form template where which you can use and uh, create your project so we'll be going through that okay okay, okay. thanks uh, is your name is also shiva or uh... yeah my name is also shiva <laughs> okay you said that okay yeah, thanks uh, thanks i don't have any other questions congrats are there Pankaj? Pankaj? Hey, sorry, I was talking on mute actually. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, these guys have already asked a lot of questions and uh, most of them have uh, been covered. Uh, from my side, I, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Only thing I'll say that uh, we'll start uh, 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 with basic examples so that you also get familiarized and then uh, we'll be building on top of it and uh, I'll also request you uh, during the session I, will, I may be asking you to read something more on this I'll be giving you links and other things so if you can also spend some time from your end and finish those things exercise or uh, task or some reading and so that you can come up with your doubt or questions in the next session it will be interactive and more useful. That's what I have found some uh, sessions uh, where it, they, they, they went very well. And from the big, they started from zero and after the session, they did their uh, production release also within four weeks. <laughs> so if you also show your interest on your end, it will be interactive and I'm very sure that it will be very useful for you. Yeah, and one more thing, Shiva. Uh, so, can we bring up some uh, real time uh, issues? So if you face any real time issues, can we uh, bring up and ask you like uh, how we can um, uh, come across these kind of issues and those kind of things? Or? Yeah, we, we can do that. And uh, all, some of the examples, or not some of like 80% of examples which I'll be discussing with you will be based on some sort of real world uh, problem only. And then I'll explain what was the problem, how we fixed it. What kind of customization we do did so all those things that we'll be discussing. Okay, okay. Mm. So usually, uh, what timings you prefer, like uh, for the training? Morning or the US in uh, night times sessions. So I'll uh, share my availability with Shiva, and we can match with yours, and then I think we'll. Uh, Morning is also fine with me, India time, and evening uh, evening will be late, I guess. 10, 10, after 10 p.m., 10 to 12, it will be very nice in the evening. Morning, if you want, uh, I will be available between 7 to 10 again in the morning. Yeah, actually, uh, for me personally, like, uh, it's probably only in the India morning time, which is U.S. night time. Okay, okay, okay. So. Okay. No, I don't know the others, but personally, uh, I prefer like the US night uh, night time, which is India morning time. Okay, okay. okay. I think timing is okay. We can uh, work and fix something. It should not be Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks, for, thanks for your time. Uh, uh, I don't have any questions coming. Okay.
Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.